to this talk about enabling new operating systems in Uyuni. My name is Pau Garcia. I'm the product owner and technical project manager of SUSE Manager. I work for SUSE. And I'm joined today by Jack from Alma Linux. Hi, everyone. Yeah. I, I used to be a Debian developer, a KD developer, and a lot more things. You can find me around online in, in uh, IOC, in Gitter. And yeah, Jack, what about you? Hey, everyone. I'm Jack. I'm the community manager uh, of Alma Linux. Um, some of you might know me from the Fedora community. Um, I was at Red Hat for a long time uh, as a community architect there, working on several open source projects and other outreach initiatives. Um, and basically, I fell in love with open source and never looked back, uh, which is a great thing. And uh, you can usually find me uh, on IRC on the bear chat. And also, uh, that's my email if anyone wants to get in touch. It's just jack at almalinux.org. OK, let's get started. So what is Uyuni? I'm going to go through a brief presentation of Uyuni. You may have seen these slides already in some other presentation. So Uyuni is a systems management solution. And it covers essentially 80% of your day-to-day -day needs as a systems administrator, as IT operator, when, when Linux is around. You get auditing, reporting, patching, installation of software, configuration management, both with Salt and Ansible. It does virtualization. Uni runs on OpenSUSE Leap, although there's a community port to CentOS in the works. It's already functional to some degree. And it supports a lot of Linux operating systems. Essentially, any enterprise Linux is supported by Uyuni, and even some non-enterprise Linux are supported too. The architecture of Uyuni is a typical client-server architecture. So we, here we have the Uyuni server, and here we have the, the Uyuni proxies, which are an optional uh, element of the infrastructure when you have thousands of, or tens of thousands of clients. So typically, uh, you can attach systems directly to the server, but when you go over three, 4,000 client systems, you will want to, to use these proxies. And that way, you can easily reach 15, 20,000 uh, clients per Uni server, or even more. We have cases of 30,000 clients per system. In the case that you have uh, beyond those 25, 30,000 systems, you can also use a multi-server architecture, what we call the hub, where you have a, another uh, server, the half server over there acting as an orchestrator between several uh, Uyuni servers. The origins of Uyuni are in a, in a project founded by Red Hat uh, a long time ago called Spacewalk. But we forked, uh, SUSE forked that, that project in 2018 and created Uyuni. So since then, we have our own project. We are our own upstream. The features of Uyuni is what you would expect of any systems management solution. You can deploy, you can patch, you can do the service pack migration on operating systems that require this. You can do configuration management. You can do bare metal or, um, or virtual machines. You can schedule actions to be performed in, in the future. You, you just you don't need to, to sit in front of, of something where you want to execute that. And of course, you can also do compliance management with OpenSCAP and CV audits. Everything in Uyuni is available in three ways. You can use the web UI, the API, or command line tools. So what we find is typically users will start with the web UI as they gain knowledge, they move to the command line tools, and ultimately, they write their own API scripts, uh, potentially integrating some other tools like uh, ServiceNow or Jira or, or some other uh, CMDB, for instance. There's, uh, Uyuni added a, a lot on, on top of what Spacewalk provided back in the day. So there's transparent integration with Salt and Ansible. We can manage uh, systems on any any place, essentially, not only on-premise, cloud, uh, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud. The, the thing about Uyuni is you don't really know where your systems are. You don't really care, actually, because to you, it's all the same. They are managed systems. Um, we have this a great feature called content lifecycle management. So typically, on production systems, you don't want to deploy your uh, software directly. You want to go through this typical uh, environment, so development, testing, and production. What Content Life Cycle Management does is it creates different software channels, and you can promote software as you typically do in any IT governance workflow. Uh, 
there's recovery actions, there's, you can even build operating system and container images to make sure that the starting point for everybody, for developers or for new applications is, is always what you have vetted. As I said, there's uh, compliance, there's virtualization management, even with HA, high availability virtualization clusters with KVM or Zen. That's a, a feature that we are going to introduce in a few weeks. Um, there's also monitoring. We have uh, standardized on, on Prometheus and Grafana, which is the cloud native stack these days. And uh, if you know Sol, you know that there's a very powerful feature called the, the formulas. We have uh, created something called formulas with forms, which is uh, like a, a form, a UI that you can create for those Sol formulas. And, and we are also working on providing that for Ansible, for the Ansible playbooks. As I said, so Uni supports most of the enterprise Linux operating systems. Of course, all the SUSE operating systems, all the, all the uh, RHEL clones, or RHEL, CentOS, Oracle Linux, Alma. Um, and, and then, then we have some more exotic operating systems. Of course, there's Ubuntu, which is getting very popular, Debian, and then we have Amazon Linux, Alibaba Cloud Linux. We have Slee Micro, which is a new minimal operating system introduced by, by SUSE recently. And we will keep adding new operating systems in Uni. And this talk is exactly about that, how we added support for Alma Linux. Jack, tell hey, us about back. Alma. Hey, everybody. How are you? OK, great. All right, so uh, Alma Linux. Uh, yeah, let's uh, get the next slide, Paul, if we can. Yeah. So that's our project. OK. so. Who or what is Alma Linux? Um, so we're, uh, we're an open source and forever free enterprise Linux distribution and community. Um, we're one-to-one -one binary compatible with RHEL. Uh, we're a CentOS alternative as well. Uh, so uh, if anyone is uh, looking for an alternative to CentOS, uh, you've come, you know, you know where to look. Uh, we're also a 501c6 nonprofit and that's very important because that means that we're owned, governed, and driven by the community. Um, there's no single entity that owns uh, any of the intellectual property, any of the trademarks, um, any of you know that that type of stuff. It's all everything is owned by the nonprofit, and that's to ensure continuity. We basically want to make sure that uh, what happened with CentOS does not happen again, and um, this is one of the ways of making that happen. And also, I want to say we're graciously sponsored and supported by awesome uh, open source focused companies and organizations. Uh, all of them are listed on our site, but, um, you know, we have the backing of uh, places like AWS, um, Arm, which has been phenomenal, uh, Equinix Metal. Um, there's so many uh, high velocity. I want to mention there are primary mirror sponsors. So I got to mention them too. Uh, cPanel. Um, lots of places. They're all on the site. I'm not going to bore you with all that right now. Um, and I think one of the uh, great things about our team is that many of us have been doing this for over a decade or more. So we're really uh, well seasoned when it comes to doing rel rebuilds. Um, and I think that, you know, the, the product uh, definitely shows that um, the OS is rock solid. Um, we were able to rebuild rel 8.4. Um, in only three or four days after uh, Red Hat actually released it, which is like, a, if you know anything about the history of the community, that's like amazing speed. Um, and and we want to we wanna make that even shorter for the future. And we have plans on making that even shorter for the future. And uh, what else? We're, it's, we're available now. Um, we've actually, the, the first release, which was 8.3, uh, was out on March 30th. Um, we, we're now on 8.4. Um, our arm is in beta, and that's actually, by the time you watch this, um, it's probably going to be sta uh, stable uh, or very shortly stable. And um, we have some great features like uh, secure boot, open SCAP support. We support Arata. Um, you know, it's just really a well-seasoned, very well-developed uh, uh, enterprise Linux distribution. So uh, what am I doing at a... At a you need talk at an open source conference. Uh, well, uh, I love to. I love this quote. Not all those who wander are lost. For any of the uh, Lord of Lord of the Rings Hobbit fans out there, so um, we're definitely definitely didn't wander to the wrong place. That's for sure. 
let's get the uh, the next slide. So um, why are we here? Because we believe in community and collaboration. Um, I think you know from from the minute the project was released, uh, we set out to start working with everyone in the community um, across you know really everywhere, um, and and we just want to. Um, we, we decided that we wanted to be a bridge and build bridges and, and try to bring communities together. I know there are lots of um, factions in different places and, you know, that's that's kind of the nature of open source. And I think, uh, you know, one of one of the things that we definitely think we can improve is like cross um, cross product, cross project collaboration. Um, uh, definitely the, the CentOS announcement uh, when that happened, uh, I don't know. How many people here are really very familiar about that? But that kind of caused a lot of confusion in the community. It also caused a lot of FUD. Um, that's not good for anyone. Um, I think that you know we want to we want to calm things down. Uh, we want to we want to bring things back to a state of normalcy like they were before. Um, also, OBS is great. I think um, you know it was definitely the inspiration for how we architected our build system. And our build system, uh, you'll hear more about that uh, in the future if you follow the project. Um, and then, you know, bottom line, uh, I feel like we're all in this together. Um, everyone doing open source uh, shares a common mission and a common vision. You know, certainly a rising tide lifts all boats. And uh, OpenSUSE is definitely a, a big, very big part of that ecosystem, um, especially, you know, being another uh, RPM-based ecosystem. There's a lot of room for working together there and a lot of room for collaboration. And like I said, you know, our philosophy and our goals is to foster cross community collaboration across the whole ecosystem. And, you know, when we released, um, you know, a, a couple of uh, people from the uni team reached out and, and wanted to um, collaborate. Um, and, and we kind of reached out simultaneously, I should say. And, uh, you know, it was just very fruitful. Like we came together and, um, the code was written and uh, here we go, you know, another project supporting us and another uh, project that we can be a part of and another great conference with great people that we can come and participate in. And I think that's really, you know, that's what the spirit of community is all about. And that's why that's why we're here. Yeah, indeed, it's true. And uh, OK, so really, um, we'd love to ask, you know, what can we do for you? Um, you know, we'd, we'd love to, we, we love to help in any way possible, um, anyone working on any project. Um, you know, if, if uh, you're looking for help with anything, um, and also if you'd like to contribute, uh, we certainly, you know, love the community growing. It's been growing uh, like crazy. And uh, we welcome everybody from all over the world. Um, it's really crazy. We have like in our chat, we have conversations going on like in English and Spanish and Turkish and Japanese. It's just, it's been amazing. So, um, you know, definitely check us out. Uh, we have our Mattermost server. It's chat.almalinux.org. We're also on Libera chat. I should have put that in there, but I guess I forgot. But uh, it, everything is bridged. So if you come to one place, it'll show up on the other place. Um, all of our code is up on GitHub. Um, if you'd like to take a look, uh, you know, at, at, bunch of different uh, sub projects you can find them there um, uh, definitely our website and our wiki have a lot of information as well uh, we have a bug tracker at bugs.almalinux.org and also we have a pretty vibrant reddit community uh, we also have our own forums which is just forums.almalinux.org um, again you know feel free just find us anywhere um, you know come by participate we already had a few uh, SUSE people uh, jump in our chats and in other places. And, you know, we were totally very welcoming. We love to work with everyone. We like to hear everyone's opinions. And I think that's the best way um, to make sure that great, great open source is produced uh, by just listening to everybody, trying to find out what they need. And, you know, people come in all the time with different opinions and, hey, you know, this should be differently. Um, as long as it, you know, is definitely like has merit and is positive, uh, we're more than happy to, to make those changes and to, to make those things a reality. So um, again, you know, we, we decided to come here because uh, we did the integration. The integration went great and we certainly love the community. We want to build bridges. And uh, I'll just, uh, if you want to show the next slide, I can sign off. 
You can also uh, yeah. find us on Twitter if you guys want. And, you know, we love uh, we love Open Sousa. We love Sousa. We love the community. Uh, some people would consider us competitors. I don't consider anyone competitors. I think we're all here to work together. And uh, we can do great things together. And certainly uh, we love everyone here. And I want a special shout out to Neil Gampa because uh, he's awesome. And uh, he definitely... He's everywhere. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's like a ninja. Like you say his name. And like you look over your shoulder, like whoa, like he's here. And so uh, I just want to give him a great shout out. Um, he's, I know he's on your guys' board. Um, he's awesome. You guys are lucky to have him. And I uh, just really wanted to say thank you for uh, to, to really everyone that was part of this. Uh, it was really tremendous working with everyone. And we're not going to stop. We're going to keep working together. I think me and Paul like have a weekly meeting now that uh, <laughs> we we get together and try to find things to work on. So. Uh, again, you know, if anyone's interested, uh, we're glad to be here. We're very humbled to be here. I want to say thank you to everybody. And my daughter wants to say thank you to everybody. She's walking down the stairs right now, even though I told her not to come. And uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. And uh, Pa, will let you uh, do some of some more of the dirty work. Thank you, Zach. Okay, so now this talk is about adding new client operating systems. And I'm going to go knee deep into that. So don't be scared by the following slides. There's a summary in the end, and there's references to pull requests. So what do you have to do when you need to add a new operating system in your unit? The first things to consider are, is the new client operating system they want to add available on the open build service? And this is very important because the, the, the unit is built on OBS. So another important thing to consider is the, the new client, a variation of an existing operating system. Uh, that is already supported. Do I want to add the, the new client operating system as only with salt? You know that uh, in, in Uni, we, you can manage clients with the traditional stack that comes from the old space work times, but also with, with salt. And increasingly, we support clients and salt only because there's a richer feature set. There are, there are some features that are no, not supported at all with the traditional stack. And also an important thing, if you are going to support with SALT, which you, you should do, then is the client operating system known already by SALT, or do I need to enable this new operating system in SALT? So first thing, is the new client operating system in OBS? If yes, you're lucky and you're good to go. But if not, and that was the case with Alma Linux, you just need to ask the OBS admins to add it, and they will do that. Uh, for us, it took just a few days to that. In some cases, we could have considered, for instance, with Alma Linux, to reuse the binaries from another operating system. For, for instance, for Alma, we could have used the CentOS client tools that we already had. But since CentOS 8 is dying, we are actually building new binaries based on Alma Linux. And that's the base for all the rel clones in the future in Uni. Then, uh, for instance, for, for SLES, you could use the uh, OpenSUSE lib binaries now also since this closing, the, the leap gap has finished now. Now then next thing is, is this a variation of an existing client? In our case, yes, Alma Linux is a RHEL 8 clone. So all the complex stuff, which is the modules and upstream, uh, that special casing is already implemented. So yeah, that part, we didn't need to really delve into that. As I said, we could have built the uh, used the CentOS 8 client tools, but in our case, we are going to phase up CentOS 8 client tools and actually adopt Alma Linux as the new base for all of these uh, what so-called enterprise Linux class operating systems. Salt only or salt and traditional. So Linux is officially supported only as a salt client, but actually we've uh, implemented also a traditional uh, stack support in in code just because the the two of us that implemented that are not actually developers so you can see that we didn't it was more difficult for us to say i will not implement a traditional stack rather than to just implement everything because we were actually just copying code from other operating systems and then if the new client operating system is not known by salt, which was the case of Alma Linux, you need to add a grain. And I think a grain is rather easy. You just need to, to go to salt. This is the upstream, and but you, you need to do that in the OpenSUSE package also, which is usually faster. 
um, than, than uh, salt accepting your grain. And it's rather easy. You just need to set um, like a code name, a string, and that's it. So it's two places. It's really easy. And then you have to say, this Alma Linux is of the Red Hat family. And with that salt, we know what package manager to use, uh, how to resolve conflicts, and all of that. Then you need to set up a development branch for yourself. You need to uh, fork and clone the, the source code of Uni. Then you need to create a fork uh, in OVS to be actually build the packages so that when you uh, write code, you can actually build those packages and deploy that and make sure that everything is all right, including database migrations and everything. Uh, you need, uh, if, if you're uh, adding a new client operating system, you need to fork some client tools or to start from scratch. But I would advise to just select one of the of the supported client tools already, and with that, um, uh, start from there. There's a wiki page explaining how to uh, how to set up all of these in full detail. Then, where, what's the code that you need to touch? So. This is the easy part, and this is the minimum that you need to do. There's some Python enablement, some enablement in Saw that I essentially already showed most of it. And then there's an ini file which lists the, the repositories of the new client operating system. If you want to add some uh, niceties in the web UI, then you can go and implement some Java and SQL code. And this is actually like 75% of the work. So yeah. You, you can keep it minimal and it will, it's fully functional, but if you want to, to have all the, the beautiful things in the web UI, do the Java part and SQL part. So repository, we just need to add this to this space world common channels. I have added these uh, repositories, the GPG key and everything. So this is for x86-64. When there's R64, we will also add it. That's trivial, mostly. If your repositories are protected by some token certificate or user and password, then things get a bit hairy. But this was not the case with Alma Linux, so it was really easy. That's a nice thing of open source and free. Uh, then uh, we need to tell um, the, the client tools, what client tools to use, because um, the sole package, it might not be available in, on, on Alma Linux, as it is the case, actually. You will need to add EPL, and we don't want you to need to add EPL because it's a huge thing. Then Python. So uh, Uyuni has a concept, what we call the boot repository, because um, you can only register systems can access the, the repositories made available by Uyuni. But what if you are not registered yet? How do you access the minimal repository with the, the packages that you need in order to register? That's what we call the bootstrap repository, and there's several ways to register. You can initiate from the web UI, or you can initiate from the client side uh, using a, what we call a bootstrap script. And in order to enable that bootstrap script, essentially you need to tell uh, Uyuni, hey, this is the file that you need to look at, this Alma Linux release, match this string, and if it's that, then you will have to use those packages, that bootstrap repository. You remember that was exactly the, the grain that we used uh, in the previous slide. Then you have to tell it what packages actually to provide in that bootstrap repository. And in, in our case, I'm telling you the same uh, what's called the expanded support aid, which is another rail clone, because for, we need the same packages for all the rail clones. So this is also pretty trivial, and it, they will be stored in this place in the Uni server hard disk. Then I need to solve how to identify the client operating system, and it's very easy. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to test if this file exists. If this file exists, Alma Linux release, then I'm going to say this is an Alma Linux system. Easy. As I said, there's also an, uh, initiate the registration of the client from the web, from the Uni server web UI. In that case, you need to, uh, to tell it, to tell Uni, hey, this is the, the repository that you have to serve. And this is just using another grain from salt uh and and yeah rather easy actually because this is all implemented when you uh, add the grain to to, the, to that core this this uh, os major release will automatically appear then uh the, the all the communication between the uni server and the and the alma linux client is going to be encrypted and secured by an ssl certificate so i need to tell the clients hey you have to trust this certificate that is described in this Red Hat 8 SLS file. Actually, uh, we use the same SSL certificate for all the clients, for all the operating systems. So, but for historical reasons, 
we keep saying, yeah, we keep different files describing that. We are simplifying that because it doesn't make any sense to keep it complex. Then uh, this is, so with this, we for the basic part. So with this, that was the first part of the enablement that we did for Alma Linux. And with this, Alma Linux is fully functional as a client already. Next thing that we can do is if I want to show in the web UI, uh, where do these packages come from? And I want to say, hey, this RPM comes from Alma Linux. Then I have to add the, the GPG key to this and this provider called Alma Linux. And then we get into the 30 files of Java that you need to touch. Now, this part is only a co for convenience, really. If you want to be able to use checkboxes in a uni server in the web UI to enable monitoring, container building, OS building, and, and, and in the case of SUSE Manager, which is the downstream of Uni supported, fully supported by SUSE, if you want to show the product name instead of just an unknown product string in the system details, you need to do this um, Java enablement. The, the, what you need to do, everything that you need to add to the Java part is provided by this call. Salt call that is local grains dot items. You run this on an Alma Linux box, and then you will get all the values, which are the OS grain, the OS full name, and OS family grain. With that, you are done because Alma Linux is matched in, inside internally in Uni by the rel 8 matching code. So we just need to do some special casing in some places, but that's about it. I'm going to go very quickly about this. So we will define this uh, server string, this this constant. To, to be able to match the grains. Then here's the special case in the, that, that I said earlier. Uh, I want to be able to tell Alma Linux, and, and yeah, in, the, in, in this same line, I'm telling also Amazon Linux from RHEL, um, because otherwise the, the Alma Linux uh, systems and Amazon Linux will get the, the RHEL 8 repositories. Another thing I'm going to say, OK, match the OS grain provided by salt. If it's Alma Linux, then I have to do this, which is running some remote commands. More testing against the uh, OS grain in different places for Alma Linux. Even more testing of this uh, Alma, Alma Linux release file. And here I'm, 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 I'm connecting, essentially, the Java part with the salt part. This, this detect plain rel part, what it does is uh, it, it, this, this goes to the code that connects the, the salt bus, the zero NQ bus, with the uh, Java part that comes in the Uni server. Even more, uh, really Alma Linux release file. You can see that this is spread across a lot of places. And here is the, 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 the final place where we actually say, I'm passing this parameter, which is the content of the Alma release file, Alma Linux release file, and that's going to be what what the all the previous code that was checking for the Alma Linux release will uh, get. Of course, if there's no Alma Linux release file because this is I don't know slash or busy Linux or McAfee Linux, whatever, this will be empty, and that's why this is optional code. We keep connecting the thing. So this is the contents. We are reading the contents of this Alma Linux. And that's about it. So in summary, <laughs> you need to uh, do edit like 10 files, Python and salt. And that's the easy part. And then in order to get the nice parts in the web UI, you need to touch in 30 additional files, which is a bit cumbersome. We, we really want to simplify this. So, uh, but. Even though it's 40 files that you need to touch for a RHEL clone or a Debian clone or a SLES or OpenSUSE clone, it took us like three days by two non-developers. There was Julio working with me. Julio is our SUSE manager and Uni release engineer. If you attend the Uni community hours last five of the month, you know him because he's quite often there. And myself, I'm the product owner. I have not coded for years. I'm actually a product manager, my kind of product guy. <laughs> so uh, it took us three days in the SUSE Hack Week back in February to implement this. And my question to you is, what's the next operating system that you are going to enable? Because I have this code that has tons of clones of RHEL, tons of clones of Debian, like Linux Mind, VZ Linux, McAfee Linux. Rocket Linux is already in the world by the community. So just keep adding. Wow. You guys are officially developers now, by the way.
<laughs> I guess yes. So at SUSE, every single everybody codes, even directors, VPs, everybody codes. We love to code. And as I said, Uyuni is the upstream project for SUSE manager. If you need a supported a supported Uyuni, call SUSE. If not, Uyuni is community supported. We have a monthly meeting every last Friday of the month. We run on OpenSUSE Leap. There's a, an unfinished port to CentOS. You can also help with that. We release almost every and we are a rolling release model. So when there's a bug, we are not going to fix it in the current release. We're going to tell you just move to the next release. The differences between SUSE Manager and the Uni are minimal. Essentially, you have to use a, a command line tool instead of a UI wizard. And uh, in the Uni, we enable all the translations, which are many by default. Uh, and in SUSE Manager, we only enable the, the translations that have been reviewed by official translators. And that's about it. So you can join us at uniproject.org or Gitter or Twitter or also in, in the, this chat and, of course, GitHub. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.